Uh, this weekend, man. Um, classic boxing match between Sean Porter and Errol Spence. Um, what's your thoughts and what you thought about the fight? Um, like I will, you know, I'll back and forth between watching it and doing something else. I was surprised about the pressure that uh Porter was putting on Spence. And that pressure like it was getting to him in the first beginning of the fight. And it was working. And because you actually seen, like, Spence, and I'm guessing it kind of shocked. I don't know why. Like, because you were telling me that this is how Porter fight yeah. all the time. Yeah, how but are. you could look at Spence's face while he, he was in the ring. He was laughing like, wait a minute, why he, he, he keep coming? And I'm like, mm-hmm. If you scouted him, then you knew that this is what he was going to do. Did you think that because he was fighting you, he was going to change up his style? Nah. Hey, wait, you know what it was? He thought he was going to be more effective at his strategy, and he wasn't. And like I had told you before, he was saying, yo, if he come forward the way he come forward, I'm going to knock him out. See, but the thing was, he never ex- understand. He never understood why it is that Porter uh, fight the way that he fights. Porter fights the way that he fights because Porter understands that, one, he's a smaller guy. Two, he got shorter arms. So when Porter gets all up in you, he's trying to smother your offense. And that's what he was doing to uh, Arrow Spent. Because Arrow Spent arms are way longer than Porter. So he needed to shorten up his punches. But he was going in thinking, I'm going to catch him at the end of my punches with him coming in. But he was coming in so fast that he couldn't. Uh, catch him coming in. So now he need to short those punches up. That's what I kept saying. Like, yo, Arrow Spence need to start throwing some check hooks to try to catch him coming in instead of trying to catch him at the end of those punches because Porter was coming in so fast. Cause I think I missed like the first two rounds. Yeah. And then it was a part in the gap in the middle round where I think I missed some of the other rounds as well. But that one, when it got to the end, and the reason I mentioned that is because like I thought like for the parts that I was watching, I remember you telling me that, yo, you had gave Porter, like, the first five rounds. Yeah. And then when I heard the scorecards, and they were, like, 116 and 111, I was mm. like, mm. that's one, that's, like, they 116, they, yeah. they're pretty big. Now, yeah. the one that went to, like, I think it was, like, 112, 113, something yeah. like that for Porter, I was, like, going by other people, and then Keith Thurman, was like, yeah, he was, like, on the side. Nah, yeah, he, he agreed. Outside. Yeah, he agreed with what I had said. He you was, know? like, I had... And he was like, yo, I got Porter winning the first five rounds. And I was like, yeah, because I was disagreeing with uh, Lennon Lewis and everybody who was like, no, nah, th- this is an even fight. And Lennon Lewis said something stupid, too, because right after Thurman said what he said, Lennon Lewis said, I disagree. One fighter can't be winning all five rounds because two fighters is in the ring. What the fuck do that have to mean? What the hell are you talking about, Lennon? No, uh, if well, one fighter is winning. winning the rounds, then that fighter is winning all the rounds. He's talking about, no, one fighter can't be winning all the rounds when there's two fighters in the ring. Mm-hmm. You don't sit your head down somewhere, man. Yeah, and cause that one, I'm like, because I had to lick it over because I didn't hit an official score. But then when I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute, them goddamn. They caused a lot. They caused a lot. <laughs> oh, like, but see, they're supposed to be a close. Fight. Close fight. No, but see, no, and that's the thing. That's why the card sometimes can be off like that. So, and see, you will have people who saying who are the most aggressive, who is landing the cleaning shots. And remember, I told you early on in the first four or five rounds, I said, yo, Errol Spence is trying to knock him out. He was getting those one shots, and, the, and them shots were, ooh. Some people would give him the round because of them ooh shots. But they weren't looking at the fight that Porter was landing and throwing five or six punches at a time, and All he was landing been, throwing one. Because also, that Landon Lord was saying some shit about, oh, yeah, no punches that uh, he, Porter's are throwing. None of them are getting in. And I'm no, like, they was. Like, he was throwing five. And yeah. if you look, he landed about two or three of the old punches. Yeah. And like, he ain't got to land all five. He just got to get some of those punches in there to split the guard. And see. And that's what he was doing the whole fight. And another thing, too, that I and did that not. that nigga got good conditioning because even in the 12th yeah. round, he, he was, still, was still going the same way. Even after he bad. got knocked down yeah. in the 11th, he was And he like, got up like, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, come on. Like, Mo dude get knocked down, you see them kind of like wobble back and try to hold. He was like, I ain't got no knee. And, I'm going to run ahead head first. Come and, on. And them. 
let me tell you one thing that I underestimated about Sean Porter. You know what it was? I did not think that Sean Porter would have faster hands than Errol Spence, but he did. Yeah, he was getting to he the did. spot more than he like, was. He, he, had fat, he was beating him to the spot so many times. But the thing that happened with Errol Spence, too, is this. I respect Errol Spence for this, but at the same time, I know he did it because he was afraid of what was coming back because of the hand speed. When the, after the, in the first three, four rounds, what you seen was he could not deal with the pressure that was coming in and it started bothering him. And I think in the fourth round, he had started doing a little roughhousing because he had got pissed off. He was getting frustrated by the pressure. But what he needed to do, he needed to start throwing a jab. But he was afraid because he was like, no, this dude hand speed, his hands are faster than mine. He just going to counter punch me if I throw out a jab. Especially so a weak one. Yeah. So what you saw from Errol Spence, Errol Spence fought. He fought Porter's type of fight, and he won. So I give him hell of a respect for that. He went in there and fought this dude's style, and he won the fight. And I was like, because what he needed to do was throw that jab. And he was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to fight this fight. And he won. And it was inside brawl. And it was a fantastic fight, by the way. Especially because I, they're what I expected from the Canelo Triple G fight. That type of thing. Yeah. No. See, I didn't, but you, and, and, and I didn't say what was crazy about that. I did, too. I agree with you. I expected it. But we underestimated one thing. Triple G was a little scared to get in there and brawl with the smaller guy. That's why he fouled. He fired his trainer. His trainer wanted him to get in there and be more of a brawler with Canelo. And Triple G was like, nah, I don't want to fight like that. Yeah, mostly because when you, I have seen Triple G in that fight with Danny Jacob and stuff, he was throwing a lot of punches. But when that fight came, he was like, nah, I'm good. Didn't want to go inside. I'm going to be a boxer. And I'm like, hmm, nobody want to see that Triple G. People want to see the Triple G that fought Danny Jacob and the other people who was going in there. Head hunting, you going in here saying, "Hey, I'm just trying to score points." Yeah, but he didn't want he didn't want to take them punches that Canelo was throwing back. And and then like I ain't saying like I want a full on brawl. Like them dudes there to me didn't have a full on. Like it was a point where they would slow down and try to be boxing, but it was slipping and moving. Like to me, a brawl the two dudes that's in there throwing punches, they were slipping and moving. Yeah. And making hit, missing, making people, making the uh, fighter miss. But I'm like, that's what I expected for. But then again, uh, Triple G, them don't really have too much head movement. So it, it probably would have been a brawl. Yeah. And the thing, too, with Sean Porter, I said in this fight, this was a fight where I think Sean Porter won the fight. I Like, I think Errol Spence won the fight, but I think Sean Porter won it. Let me tell you why. The one in the battle? Yeah. He comes out as a guy who's looking great. Because a lot of people, I was listening to um, Deontay Wilder after the fight. He was like, nah, I kind of expected for Errol Spence to kind of like dominate this fight more than he did. And that's what a lot of people were saying. They were discounting uh, his performance. Like, no, he didn't do as good as we thought he was going to do. But all the people looking at Porter like, yo, Porter fought his ass off. Porter took it to Errol Spence. So, th- this is not a, like a loss for Sean Porter. It was more of a loss for Errol Spence. Now, now people looking at him like, oh, we expect for you to do more. I told you that, that every punch I seen Porter throw, it looked like he was saying, hey, it's Nick, you talking about I was ducking you. I ain't ducking you. Yeah. Who, who ducking now? <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? After the... um. After the fight, they had that little the prayer conference. Yeah, right? I thought they said they got into it again. Yeah, it, it was it was friendly though, and he was and and he had Porter. He said, "So, yeah, so now you feel me now though, don't you?" And he was like, "Nah, man, I ain't I ain't feeling that." And he was like, "Yeah, all right, I can give you your props now. It's after the fight. I can give you props." But he said, "I always knew you could fight though. I always knew you could fight." But the thing was is that the hand speed, his hand speed was really really good, man. Really good. And that punch he got hit with in the 11th round. I still don't know how that son bit didn't go down. Because yeah, that <laughs> shot right there knocked people out, bro. Yeah, that was a nice shot. And see, the, and the thing is, th- that punch showed you that what Errol Spence thought, what he thought coming into this fight, it was true. He just couldn't deliver it the way he thought. 
See, he going into the fight, he was like, I, I'm going to knock him out if he comes forward. But he was thinking, I can catch him coming in. But then in the fight, he had to learn that I got to shorten these punches up inside to catch him because he getting in so fast. And then he caught him in the 11th round with that shot. But if he would have had that mind frame from the beginning of the fight that I need to shorten up these punches, he probably could have knocked him out. But... Man, that dude was coming in so goddamn fast, man. Mm -hmm. And the punches were coming in fast. Mm -hmm. That was a great fight, man. Y'all tell us what y'all thought in the comment section about the fight. Who do y'all think uh, Errol Spence should fight next? Do y'all ever want to see a rematch of this fight? Or do you want Errol Spence to uh, fight Manny Pacquiao? Because I think early this morning I saw that he called Manny Pacquiao out. Yeah, he's so, been calling Manny Pacquiao out. Yeah, so hit that like button, subscribe, and tell us what y'all think about the fight. Saturday night, man. All right.